In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The parable of the sower is a very well-known and often told parable. It's often interpreted as a story about how to have success, how to avoid failure. I've sometimes heard it applied to personal growth, as if you need to make sure that you are the good soil, good for God's work, and you better deal with those things in your life that are choking out what's good. I've sometimes heard it applied to achievements in life and in work, and most especially in ministry and work for the church. Whatever you do with your time and talents, make sure that you don't waste anything. Don't throw your resources into places where they'll get eaten up or disappear. And I think these interpretations occur mostly because when we read this story, we only begin paying attention around the second verse when Jesus starts, a sower went out to sow. But I want to suggest to you that we'll never completely understand this story unless we begin at the first verse, which reads, Jesus went out and sat beside the sea. Now, all over the Gospels, we read about Jesus going out, but he always went out to do something. He went up the mountain to pray, or he was going along the way and he stopped to do a miracle, or he paused here to talk to the people and tell them stories and parables. Uh, Always, Jesus went out and did something, but here, Jesus went out and sat beside the sea. No praying, no miracles, no teaching. He didn't take his phone, he went off the grid, he had no book to read, he just sat there by the sea and watched the waves lapping in and out. Then some people came by and saw Jesus doing absolutely nothing and said, oh, look, Jesus, since you're not busy, come on, tell us some stories. You know, we need a bit more of what you're good at. So Jesus pushes out in a boat and uses the water as a natural amphitheater so that he can talk and they will all hear him. And then he tells this story about a farmer sowing seeds. Now, in the first century, at least in the Middle East, This is how you would sow seeds if you were a farmer. You'd you'd get a great big basket of seeds. You'd balance it on your hip like this, and you'd dip your hand into the basket and you'd fling the seeds out all over the field. (coughs) You need to bear in mind that there were no mechanized drilling machines at that point. It was just hard physical work. And when it came to sowing seeds, you would fling them out by hand. That's how it worked. And it was inevitable, inevitable, that some of it was going to get lost. Some of it was going to land on the pathway, and the birds would eat it. Now, okay, you could say, well, at least I'm feeding the birds, and that's not a bad thing to do, but nothing was going to grow. And some of it was going to land on the edge of the field where it wasn't tilled and fertilized, and and the weeds were growing. And so, You know, it would grow with the weeds and you couldn't harvest it, so that would get lost. Most of the seeds would land in the field, and most of them might grow. But even then, as now, a farmer cannot control exactly what happens when they sow seeds, because some of it depends on the soil, and some of it depends on the weather, and some of it depends on, well, who knows, because gardening is not a very precise science. Some things are just beyond a farmer's control. I think maybe as Jesus was sitting beside the sea doing absolutely nothing and then having people demand that he tell them some more stories, perhaps what he wanted to say was, you know, you can't control the outcome of everything, so now and again you might as well sit beside the sea and do nothing. That's okay to do. But here's the interesting thing, that when we read this story, it tends to be because we live in a society where everything's attached to numbers, we tend to read it as if it's about the numbers. Perhaps like most people, you read the parable of the sower and think, well, Jesus, this is great. I certainly don't want 
It's anything I do to get lost by the wayside. But when it comes to 30, 60, or 90, or 100, well, I don't want to be a 30 percenter. You know, I want a, a decent grade point average, or I want a good grade in my degree. I, you know, I want to be up there with the hundreds. What can I do to make sure I get 100 and not 30? I think it misses the point of what Jesus is trying to say. Everything that we do in our society, in our world, is related to numbers. The, the school grades you get, the square footage of your home, the salary attached to your position. We're really set up to think like this. But I don't think Jesus was talking about numbers at all. I think he was saying, when you go and sow seeds, you don't have a lot of choice about this. You just have to throw them out there. And some of them are going to come to nothing. That's just how it is. Yeah, we'll feed the birds, well, good. Some of them are going to get stuck in the weeds, get choked out, and there's not much we can do about that either. I don't know about you, but sometimes I, I look back on my life, which, you know, I'm nearly at the end of my working life. Well, you know, I've got another decade maybe, but a lot of my working life has gone. This is not a time for brand new projects. And sometimes I look back and think, did I get it right? Did I miss it? You know, could I have done better if only I'd done this or if, that, if I'd taken this opportunity instead of letting it pass me by? And, you know, the temptation is there to look back and worry about whether we've got it right. Or when you look forward and see the next 10 years, you think, how can I make sure that I get the maximum out of this 10 years and don't waste a minute? And I think it so misses the point because I think what Jesus wants us to understand through this story is that if we throw ourselves out into the world and do the best with what we've got, some of what we do is going to come to nothing. It's just how it is. And some of what we do will get choked out by other things, and that's okay. Some of what we do might be absolutely remarkable, but it might not be the thing that you expected to be remarkable. It might be something else that surprises you. A couple of weeks back, Della was telling us about planting her garden a couple of years back. And she said that she planted stuff and she watered it and she fertilized it and she looked after it and took care of it. And at the end of the season, well, practically nothing had grown. But somewhere in the middle of all that, she was canning tomatoes. Do you remember this story? She was canning her tomatoes, and there were a few that weren't really suitable for canning. They weren't much good for anything. So she chucked them out in the garden. And the next season, guess what? She got a bumper tomato crop. It wasn't what she was expecting. It wasn't what she was working for. But she chucked some seeds out, and she got a crop. And I think that is what Jesus is saying. We have time, we have talents, we have resources, and we, yes, we should do the best we have got, the best we can with what we've got, for sure. This isn't a story about giving up and doing nothing. It's a story about saying, do what you can with what you've got, but then, when the day's work is over, you can't control the outcome. And whether you get 30 or 60 or 100 fold, in what you've chucked out there in your life is not entirely up to you. A better strategy, more effort, more worry lying awake at night, it's not gonna help. So at that point, the smart thing to do is to do what Jesus did. Go out and sit beside the sea. Watch the, lay, the waves lapping in and out, or listen, I love this, listening to the water, lapping in, lapping out, lapping in, lapping out. It's very therapeutic sound. I think we've got a storm coming, so it might not be so therapeutic today, but you know that lovely calm feeling when the, when the water is quite calm. Sit beside the sea and bear in mind that however hard we work and whatever we've done with our lives, the outcome is in the hands of God. And it's okay. So yeah, we can sit beside the sea and relax in the knowledge that God loves us as we are, and God will take care of the outcomes. Some of it will be wasted. Some of it will feed the birds. Some of it will be all right. And just some of it 
will surprise us by being amazing. Amen.